So this is just an example of a reusable booty that owners can use. These are empty IV bags that we just cut the bottom off. And then you can cut a couple of holes um, here in the top and pass some brown gauze through. And so this is just an easy um, thing that the dog can be discharged with. And then you just slide the foot inside here and then tie even just a little bow um, on top. And these uh, fit well for pretty much most dogs. Um, if they're really big or the bandage is really bulky, it won't fit as well, but then they have something reusable to go home with. And these are just a little bit more stiff and thicker than your average plastic bag at home. So these are pretty nice, easy, reusable things for owners to use. And this can be a pretty messy procedure. So lots of towels, I'm wearing gloves just to keep myself clean. It's important to keep his head at a level <laughs> position. I don't wanna crank his head way back because uh, that is going to make it easier for him to aspirate uh, if his neck is, is way up. Another use um, that we use is for animals that have things like heart monitors on or patients that don't have hair and they're more susceptible to getting cold in hospital. So you can actually take stuccanet and cut it to any length and make a shirt out of it. So what I'm going to do, probably pretty badly, some people are really good at this, but I'm going to cut two half circles and these are gonna be my armholes or forelimb holes. Those are more like triangles than circles, but the good news is it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can see I made two little openings for the forelimbs. They're pretty close to lined up. And now we can slide this on our smaller patients like this guy and he has a turtleneck so maybe this is a cat in hospital sphinx cat that is chronically um, hypothermic maybe this is a patient that has a JP drain and those big harnesses are just too bulky um, but it can kind of hold tubes or ECG leads close to the body or just keep the patients warm um, another way that we like to use this is during anesthesias on our neonatal patients, our exotic patients. So thinking about patients that have a small body size, even like sugar gliders, those patients that you pick up are so light, they lose their body heat really quickly. So keeping them warm can be a big challenge in our anesthetic procedures in exotics and neonatals. So I like to often if we're not working on their body, like let's say we're doing a eye nucleation on a guinea pig or a tail amp on a rat, I like to cover their whole body in bubble wrap and then I use stockinette over the bubble wrap in order to keep them from losing body heat um, through, through their main um, core. Fact, the most common injury we see them coming into Dove Lewis for is um, hair entrapment around their little paws. Their quills will catch hair and uh, it will become round around their feet and essentially do like a strangulation injury, which is often not caught until it's quite severe, again, because they pull those little feet right in. But a really useful trick for hedgehogs is actually to put about a half an inch of water into a clear bowl. And then you can gently lower them into it and the water will cause them to unfurl and you can actually kind of look from underneath to examine their feet and their belly and their skin and so forth. Uh, when I do eye meds, I like to come from kind of up top instead of coming at the front. Uh, that's gonna make it a little more challenging to restrain your patient. So with this guy, I'll just kind of tip his head back. And then with the end of my hand that's holding the bottle, I'm just gonna hold his eyelid up. Good boy. The next thing I try for really challenging um, clogs and feeding tubes is I use a carbonated soda. So I go upstairs into our break room and I buy a Coca-Cola and I'm gonna use that um, to try to break up the clog. So sometimes just the extra effect of carbonated bubbles can be really helpful in breaking up that, that clog that's in there, whether it's mucus or medications. And I'm just going to drop a small amount. This has sugar in it and other things that she doesn't really need and too much carbonation would probably be irritating on her. So just make sure you're not using too much. There's not a set amount, but for her, I'm gonna start with half a cc because she's just so small. 
And I'm likely not going to easily be able to push this all in there, but I'm going to do the same thing um, by putting it on the end and I'm going to pulse it in. I'm just going to be a little bit more forceful here. Okay. And I was able to pulse that in. And what we're going to do now is close this and we're going to wait about 10 minutes and we're going to see if that carbonation was effective in breaking up the clog. Okay, so we've waited about 10 minutes and now I'm gonna come back in with this tap water. I always, I should have mentioned this earlier, but I try to get warm water as opposed to cold water. Just that added warmth seems to be a little bit more likely to break up the clog. Um, okay, and sometimes this requires a pulse, but you can see there, it's actually going pretty easily. So our cook worked in that situation. It's fantastic.